Now it's uh, 920. Yeah. Stand behind the floor. All right, final take, guys. We need to do it now or no matter what happens, just yeah, keep I'm rolling the tape. Don't make any interruptions. And I'm we'll going to kick the music in when it's at 30 seconds oh. on the clock. Since we're not having callers, I don't have to be so picky on which of these I right. choose. Right. Great. Let's okay. talk about wherever you want. Two. I'll start it over. We didn't get the uh, Atheist Experience logo. Back to, uh, I was going to say you can fade it in. Okay. Yeah, we're starting all over again, apparently. All over again. Practice makes perfect. Strangely, we managed to do one of these shows every week and not have the same yeah, trouble. Yeah, I was just thinking that. We That's have the trouble every week and we just get through it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. This is, show is, a, uh, is produced and sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. I'm your host, Jeff D. This is the co-host, Vic Farrell. Hi. And our guest today is Arlo Pignotti. Hello. This is not, I repeat, not a live episode. This is a tape we're making so that we can be slotted in it. Uh, opportune moments. We'll be on for only one hour today, and we will not be taking any calls. Uh, the Atheist Community of Austin is a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday morning at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop at 307 West 5th Street at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning, except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series at 11 a.m. at Furs Cafeteria. Uh, I should guess I should also mention our show is normally aired uh, 10, excuse me, from 9 o'clock till 10.30 on Sunday mornings. And if you can't get us on, uh, on cable or if you're, if you're out of town or if you have friends that you'd like to have see our show, you can also get us on the Internet. Just tune in to spring.net at 9 a.m. Texas time. Uh, on the second Sunday of every month, we have a board meeting at noon right after our regular meeting, and uh, we conduct official group business there, and every member of the ACA is welcome to attend, though only board members can actually vote. And for those of you who shop at Randall's, you can give them our, uh, our, our nonprofit group uh, ID number, which is 5158, and uh, then 1% of your purchase will be donated to the Atheist Community of Austin. For more information, uh, you can call our voicemail at 371-2911 or visit our own website at www.atheist-community.org. I want to just take a moment and talk about our cool gargoyles we have hanging in the back there today. Uh, these, uh, these were donated to the group by my, my wife, Amanda, who went to the trouble of cutting them out and hanging them all over the, the backdrop there. Just a little demonstration of the kind of fear and terror that uh, has been used throughout history to get people to be Christians. There we go. There's, I think that's Eve Ooh, that's with scary. her apple. Yeah. <laughs> and let's keep going. Can we cut back to those? Yeah. yeah hey, that's I think I'm related to that one. That guy's cute. I don't know what the deal is with him. These are all things they would hit. Now go the other way. There we go. Got a guy eating a baby. <laughs> Is that what he's doing? Yeah, there's a baby coming out of that guy's mouth with a mm, crown on. That's nasty. And uh, there's a nice praying Christian who looks like he's absolutely pathetic and terrified. That person, I don't know what their deal is. 
and uh, <laughs> more, just more monstrous, horrifying imagery. So if you in the Middle Ages, if uh, and they complain about Pokemon, they now, complain about Pokemon disturbing the minds of little children. Yeah. I didn't realize till now the guy eating the baby. Oh, that that might be based on Leviticus. It says that God will make the sinners eat their own children. Really? Yeah. Now, what kind of a loving God would do that? I was wondering this if it was maybe a reference to uh, Greek mythology. But no, why probably, they would put that on their churches, I don't know. It probably is generally stolen from other. We're we're recording this show on the second of January, two thousand, um, and we're all still giddy with excitement that absolutely <laughs> nothing happened. No uh, no fire from heaven. No Y two K disasters. Uh, no nuclear war. No Jesus rising from the grave. No Jesus descending to the Mount of Olives. Um, but there was one good prediction that came true. I predicted that nothing would happen. That's right. Mm. Nothing happened. <laughs> Very good. They had some strange glitches. There were weird things that went wrong, but overall everything was fine. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, a few little odds and ends. Yeah. And so, I mean, there really was something happening with Y2K, yeah. but yeah. it was uh, uh, everything that was absolutely crucial appears to have been fixed. Of course, they're still saying right now that Monday, tomorrow, when, when businesses open up right. again, uh, there, might be more, there might be more problems cropping up. But all the really life-threatening stuff would already have, yeah. have, have come up, I would imagine. Yeah, the nuclear plants didn't blow up. The water's still coming out of the pipes. Now, the watch a nuclear power up. plant blow up tomorrow, and we've got this tape <laughs> about me saying how it's all over. If it and blows up, we'll get the tape irradiated. So <laughs> <we won't do. laughs> right. That's right. Uh, so uh, now, I've been, for the last year, I've been doing these rapture reports listing the prophecies that were supposed to be coming true as the dates came up. All during 1999, uh, people were, were bending over backwards talking about how, how the world was about to end and Jesus was, gonna, Jesus was gonna return and you'd all better go become Christians immediately or, or your soul would burn forever in hellfire. Well, uh, I have a big list here of all of the predictions that uh, were like the generic 1999 ones that didn't come true, and the specific uh, January 1, 2000 ones. This is not even getting into any of the other predictions that are supposed to happen either generically sometime during the year 2000 or mm -hmm. specifically uh, at, uh, at a specific point in 2000 other than January 1. But these here are all false. Not a one of them came true. So here we go. I'm going to finally retire this list because it got, it get, it, the list got really big near the end of the millennium. Sometime in 1999, we were supposed to see the end of the world according to some Seventh-day Adventist literature. We were supposed to see the end of the world according to the Jehovah's Witnesses. We were supposed to see an apocalyptic battle follow, followed by peace as per a vision of George Washington. According to this apocryphal tale, the apparition of a beautiful woman appeared before George, saying, Son of the Republic, look and learn. Thereupon he saw the world as it would be in 1999. Black clouds with red lights in the center representing invading armies spewed forth from all around the world and poured into America. After a massive battle, an angel sprinkled water on the world and peace was restored. Didn't happen. <laughs> The height of the Antichrist's power, uh, when a terrible holocaust will occur, as foreseen by astrologer Gene Dixon. In The Call to Glory, Dixon wrote, As the Russian armies begin to move on the Middle East about 1999, Russian MIRVs and FOBs will rain down a nuclear holocaust upon our coastal cities, both east and west. Dixon also claimed the Antichrist was born on February 5th, 1962, uh, which happens to be the birthday of actress Jennifer Jason Lee. Antichrist? Yes. Hmm. Uh, anyway, that didn't happen. As far as we know, the uh, height of the Antichrist power has not happened. Um, a pole shift will cause natural disasters in World War III, according to the sleeping prophet Edgar Cayce. Uh, that didn't happen in 1999. The end of the world, according to linguist-slash-credophile Charles Berlitz, as predicted in his book Doomsday 1999 A.D., any of a number of scenarios could happen, claimed Berlitz, including nuclear devastation, asteroid imp impact, pole shift, or other Earth changes. Uh, so that's all the generic 1999 ones that just didn't come true. And again, we're not bothering to bring up all of the ones 
that were, that were supposed to happen on specific dates. Those were coming like three or four a month. And That's uh, it for that. The, the sleeping prophet Edgar, Edgar Casey should not read the dead prophet Edgar Casey. He is dead now. <laughs> He's yeah. a dead man. I now, predict anything. <clears throat> these are the predictions generically expected to happen sometime in the year 2000. And uh, maybe if we're clever, we'll retire this tape before 2002. It might still be yeah, interesting we'll in 2000, 2001. But here we go. Um, of course, there's something about all those zeros that makes 2000 a favorite year among doomsday prophets. It promise, promised to be, promises to be a fantastic spectacle with loonies of all descriptions coming out of the woodwork, prophesying raptures, Armageddon's, apocalypses, plagues, comics, comets, comics, <laughs> second comings, pole shifts, earth changes, and doomsdays. Hal Lindsey, whose 1988 prediction failed, suggests the end, of, uh, the end in his recently published book entitled Planet Earth 2000 AD. However, he leaves himself a face-saving outlet. Could I be wrong? Of course. The rapture may not occur between now and the year 2000, says Lindsay on page 306 of that book. Uh, the beginning of Christ's millennium, according to some Mormon literature, such as the publication Watch and Be Ready, Preparing for the Second Coming of the Lord. New Jerusalem will descend from the heavens in 2000, according to that book, landing in Independence, Missouri. 19th... <laughs> Even our camera guys can't believe it. Uh, 19th century mystic Madame Helena Petrova Blavatsky, the founder of Theosophy and a kook and a half, if there ever was one, foresaw the end of the world in the year 2000. Even Sir Isaac Newton was bitten by the millennium bug. He predicted that Christ's millennium would begin in the year 2000 in his book, Observations Upon the Prophecies of Daniel and the Apocalypse of St. John. Ruth Montgomery predicts Earth shift will, uh, Earth's axis will shift and the Antichrist will reveal himself in 2000. The establishment of the kingdom of heaven according to the Reverend Sun Young Moon the second coming followed by a new age, according to famed psychic Edgar Cayce. That's the guy, who, according to him. Uh, the dead guy. Yeah, according to that dead guy, there was, um, there was, um, we'd have the natural disasters in World War III. The actual second coming, according to him, is supposed to be in the year 2000. The second coming, as forecasted in Ed Dobson's book, uh, The End, Why Jesus Could Return by AD 2000. There's that word could again. The end of the world, according to Lester Sumrall in his book, I Predict 2000. The tribulation is to occur before the year 2000, said Gordon Lindsay, founder of the Christ for the Nations Ministry. That's before 2000. Let's, let's move that one back to 1999. Um, according to a series of lectures by, uh, given by Shoko Ashara in 1992, 90% of the world's population would be annihilated by nuclear, bio, biological, and chemical weapons by the year 2000. I don't know how these by the year 2000 ones got in there. I think I, I noticed that last week, too, and didn't fix it. Uh, one of the earliest predictions for the year 2000 was made by Petrus Olivi in 1297. He wrote that the Antichrist would come to power between 1300 and 1340, and the Last Judgment would take place around 2000. Hmm. According to American Indian spiritual leader Sun Bear, the end of the world could come in the year 2000 if the human race didn't shape up. Native Americans have a different we must have shaped up. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah. 18th century fire and brimstone preacher Jonathan Edwards concluded that Christ's thousand-year reign would begin in 2000. The world will be devastated by AIDS in the year 2000, according to Indian guru Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. That was the guy the Beatles were into, wasn't it? I think so. Uh, That's, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I, the name sounds familiar, something. and I know about the whole Beatles. Background. Afterwards, the world will be rebuilt by a peaceful matriarchal society, according to the Bhagwan. Uh, William Cam, a.k.a. Little Pebble, is the leader of the Australian doomsday cult Order of St. Charbel, predicting that a comet will destroy the Earth before the dawn of the new millennium. Uh, of course, the new millennium not really being until 2001. No. So we're cutting him some slack there, because he okay. probably thinks it's 2000, like most other people. Mm -hmm. 
Fundamentalist conspiracy advocate and Texas resident Texi Mars stated that the last days could wrap up by the year 2000. There's that could again. <laughs> Always covering their butts. Right. Uh, members of the Stella Maris Gnostic Church, a Colombian doom doomsday cult, went into Colombia's Sierra, Sierra Nevada mountains over the weekend of July 3 to 4, 1999, to be picked up by a UFO that would save them from the end of the world, which is to take place at the turn of the millennium. The cult members seem to have disappeared, for so perhaps they were picked up by aliens. But or if they were, there was no, there was no, uh, there was no uh, uh, end of the world in 2000. Maybe they need to stay hidden in that jungle until 2001. Mm. <laughs> A radical apocalyptic, where am I at? Yeah, that camera. A radical apocalyptic set emerged in early 18th century France called the Convulsionaries. Okay. <laughs> One of the members, Jacques Joseph Duguay, anticipated the parousia, which I guess is another word for, for apocalypse, I'm not sure, in the year 2000. Timothy Dwight, 1752 to 1817, president of Yale University, foresaw the millennium starting by 2000. Now, wait a minute. If he means the millennium, it's, it's going to start by 2001, right? Yeah. Um, Depending on whose calendar you're looking at. Martin Luther looked at 2000 as a possible end times date before finally setting on the year 1600. Mm -hmm. Sukio Mahikari, a Japanese cult, preaches that the world might be destroyed in a baptism of fire by 2000. And a Vietnamese cult headed by Ka Van Liang predicted an apocalyptic flood for 2000, but Doomsday came much earlier for the cult members. He and his followers committed mass suicide in October 1993. Now, that's all the generic 2001. So those of you watching this tape, if it's still the year 2000, any one of them that, uh, that uh, hasn't happened yet could still be pending by the, uh, by the end of the year 2000, and we'll all look forward to those. But we can tell you for sure that these few that uh, are, were predicted for January 1, 2000 didn't happen, because this here is the second when we're recording this tape. Um, the Christian apocalyptic cult House of Prayer, headed by one brother David, expects Christ to descend onto the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem on January 1. The Israeli government kicked uh, them out of the country in a preemptive strike against potentially violent doomsday nutcases who may attempt to catalyze the apocalypse through terrorist acts, such as blowing up the Dome of the Rock. Well, excuse me, by, um, by January 2nd, neither did the cult cultists blow up the Dome of the Rock, nor did Jesus descend to the Mount of Olives. No, guys, and the uh, Millennium Bug, which was supposed to result in massive computer outages in 2000, turned out to be pretty much a bust. I think we yeah. talked about that already. Um, it should be noted that very d few of the doom, doom and gloom purveyors were actually programmers. Those who, invo who were involved in these systems on a daily basis tended to suspect that while there may be widespread uh, spread outages and related problems, which also didn't happen, by the way, they thought the worst that would happen is that a whole host of unlucky nerds will have to spend several all-nighters in front of their terminals. And by all reports, that did happen. <laughs> Gary North, the founder of Christian Reconstruction, has taken the Y2K bug to a whole new level of hysteria. Gary is convinced that global economic chaos will result from a wide, well, worldwide collapse of financial computer systems. Of course, the more cynical among us would note that North is famous for making equally hysterical but inevitably false predictions in the past. That was my only disappointment. I was really hoping that the Y2K would affect all my credit cards and I would never have to pay anymore. Mm. But <laughs> it didn't happen. Now, so what are we to make of this? We're to make that it's done, the hysteria is over, now let's get on with the future. But you, Yeah, you'd have thought that by now people would have learned their lesson to just not put any, any credence behind these kinds of predictions at all. But this brings in my list. That's right. <laughs> this has been going on for, ever since Jesus said that he would come again in their generation, if he indeed said that at all. But it's, according it's to the been going on at least since somebody said that he said that. Right, yeah. right. This is old news. People have been calling on our show a lot, saying there's so many signs pointing to the end times, and they've told me that personally. But people have always been saying that. And now this this is a list. Uh, I had I had uh, one uh, atheist calendar from the American Atheist called Millennial Mania, and that's what I'm referencing to here. And it's a list of uh, all these end times predictions way, way back. And let's hear some of the older stuff here, because people have always been doing what, this. What's the oldest one you've got? And the oldest one I got is, I got that right here. 
I wouldn't according, have to Jesus himself saying... No, actually it's not. Really? It's according to the Old Testament, which ah. ties in with Christianity. Uh-huh. It was told that around 167 B.C., the book of Daniel proclaims the end of the world while wishing it was the end of the Greek world, which is ruling, was ruling them at that time. <laughs> so even before Christ was born, they were predicting the end. Um, we have, uh, and supposedly around year 30, Jesus predicts the end in a very short time. Right, he says, he those, says those there, of you, yeah. Yeah, I'm he sorry. says, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death before they have seen the kingdom of God already come into power. Yeah. And that's in Mark chapter 9, verse 1. We have... Uh, it's amazing that the religion lasted even one day after that. Yeah. Amazing. Well... <laughs> The Seventh Day Adventists were predicting stuff in the 1900s, and before they were Seventh Day Adventists, and instead of the prophet who was making all these predictions, they were like Second Day Adventists. <laughs> did I say second? No, I'm just I'm wondering what they were before they were oh, Seventh Day Adventists. Yeah. <laughs> but all these predictions he made about the end of the world never came. He readjusted his date, and he never came. He readjusted his date, and instead of you know finally just deciding this was a crackpot, they formed an entire new religion over it. So oh. why should we be surprised? Yeah. If this goes on past yeah, it, I, I predict that they'll make more. They're going to keep doing. There it. Are, and I have some. There are, there are, I'm going to get up. to that. There's okay. a few, not many, but there's a few. But well, so these more. aren't really in chronological order. Um, there, they are sort of. Well, it, it kind of jumps more of a around. taste of what has been going on throughout history. But yeah, okay. So we have in the year 14, around 1490 through 1500, Savonarola predicts any day now. In the year 1500, Anabaptists announce this year is the end. In 1516, this year, the, the Lateran Council proclaims no more end-time predictions. No one else listens. <laughs> In the year 1525, as part of his Armageddon prediction, Thomas Munzer, a German priest, preaches extermination of the rich, powerful, and Catholic and attracts 8,000 followers. 5,000 are killed, and Thomas is captured and beheaded. Pentecost. That's a little extreme, even for making stupid uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. false predictions. Pentecost, 1528. Hans Hut gathers 144,000 followers after predicting this date is the end. February, 1535. Hendrik Hendritskis, Anabaptist, runs naked with his followers through Amsterdam to let everyone know this is it. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. The year... 1600, Martin Luther, 100 years earlier, names this date as the end, and you mentioned right, this already. Right, right, after then, thinking about 2000 and saying, nah, not 2000, Yeah, and he, yeah, he bumped it up. Year 1655 and 1650, through 1657, the fifth monarchists try to trigger the end coming in these years through armed insurrection, and it seems like people <laughs> are starting to do that again. Yeah, that's okay, the Israeli police are really good at picking them off the streets. Yeah. 1662, Michael Wigglesworth, New England cleric, says it is coming soon. Year 1666, the millennium, plus 666. Oh, no. <laughs> so many are caught up in Armageddon fever, fever that George Fox, Quaker founder, reports that it seems every thunderstorm creates predictions of doom by one or another popular prophet. 1689, Pierre Jury is inspired by the Holy Spirit to name this year as the end. 1697, Cotton Mather gives prediction a try by naming this year the end. 1716, another guess from Cotton Mathar. 1736, Cotton Mathar tries again. <laughs> 1757, Emmanuel Swedenborg has visions which show him the last judgment has already come in 1757 and Jesus is on his way. <laughs> Take, he's kind of slow. 1795. Well, you know, they didn't have cars back in his day, and he's got to walk all the way down from, yeah. from you know, from where? outer space. <laughs> <laughs> he's swimming. 1795. Richard Brothers says God told him this year would be the end. God also tells him he'll be the king of England. English authorities put him in the loony bin. <laughs> Second half of 18th century. If only we would put some of the Christian leaders who thought they were going to be president in the loony bin. <laughs> Yeah, but then we'd have to support them. Oh, that's true. Well, you know? I would be willing to, you know, pay an extra 10 cents in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. that well, all the well, rest of the people who are being hideously gouged yeah. by contributing to these nutcases uh, would be able to save their money. Yeah, we'll Probably sacrifice. Probably the economy. Yeah. Second half of the 18th century, <laughs> Ann Lee Stanley, the Shakers, believe, 
is the female incarnation of God, and she will lead them through the end, happening any time now. Mm -hmm. Any time now, no so specific date. Just these time. are all seers, soothsayers, just plain nuts. And, uh, of course, you know, all through time we've had comets and eclipses and other scary stuff. Right. And, uh, for instance, uh, February 1st, 1524, English astrologers predict an Earth-destroying flood will happen this year. 20,000 flee London. The Earth is going to be destroyed. They flee they London. They flee London. <laughs> like, that's going to help if, I don't it, get if that. it is really happening. I don't get that, but that's well, funny. Well, I mean, it, one might reason, think it's reasonable in our modern age to have forgotten about the, all these 1300s and 1500s predictions, right? Yeah, yeah. Though the ones right in the Bible, you'd think that, that Christians would still be, like, reading those and going, huh, Yeah. this can't be right. What about stuff closer to our time that... You know, people alive today were around when these predictions were made and saw them not come true. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Well, um, some interesting ones, more recent ones. Uh, and some of these are 1999, but no, I don't let's think they go, were Let's go farther back list. than that, because I've, I've covered most of the 1999 ones. I see a 1919 and a 62 and a 74. What's up with those? See, 1910 here. Oh, there it is, 1919. Let's see which one that was. Albert Porta, seismologist, meteorologist, says the conjunction of the six planets will cause a magnetic current that would pierce the sun, cause great explosions of flaming gas, and eventually engulf the earth. There was worldwide panic outbreaks of mob violence and suicides. And that was 1919. Yeah. There have been more recent uh, planetary alignments with nutballs. Actually, I know the... someone personally who believes yeah. that. And I'll, yeah, I'll get that. I'll try to... I'll... When, is the, when is the next one coming up? Do you know when that is? 2000... Uh, May and two. Actually, I'll get to that. I'm just gonna. Okay. I'll be go pickier ahead. here. I'm gonna go through right, only go more interesting ones. And there's only a few more of the really old ones. Um, like interesting. Uh, there's a few ones for the year 2000. I think are worthy of mentioning. Okay, like go ahead. May 5th, 2000. Um, many predict this date when the planets will align, which is what we're uh -huh. just saying. So May 5th, 2000. And I have a friend who does believe this is happening, but he wouldn't sign the contract, the <laughs> rapture contract, where he would will me all his stuff if the end didn't happen, because why does he need all his stuff if he really believes that? And what was his but excuse? He had some excuse, but I just said, ah, you have little faith. <laughs> and, um, and did you explain to him that these, these planetary conjunctions had happened before yes. and the world didn't end? Yes, I did. And? And they... I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I don't think he had an answer for that. He also claimed that, uh, I don't know where he got this from, I hadn't seen this in writing anywhere, but that's that satellite with the nuclear, there, there was a satellite launched a couple of years ago that had lots of uh, nuclear material on it. Cassini. That's the and Cassini that was going to be near to Jupiter, Jupiter, and he moves. said that if it, it was going to get close enough to Jupiter to cause Jupiter to ignite and turn into another I've sun. I've heard that before. And, but I debated him by saying, what about Levi Shoemaker? That was a comet that yeah. broke into 15 pieces, plunging into Jupiter, and causing Earth-sized Earth nuclear explosions from their action. <laughs> well, they, and he, they said, nuclear. he said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but enough of picking on my friend. Let's Some of them. <laughs> picking on my friends here. Um, another interesting one for, that was for 1999 was a Leonid meteor shower will end the Roman Catholic Church somehow. Um, no such luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> July 15th, 99, the conjunction of the crescent moon and Venus, Satan's sign, supposedly. Ooh. Now, here's some, some really old ones here. Uh, 1213, Pope Innocent III, the witch killer, declares the prophet Muhammad is the Antichrist, everybody to the crusade. Uh-huh. 1254, yeah. Emperor no, Frederick II says Pope Innocent III is the Antichrist because the Pope's name adds up to 666 in numerology. <laughs> <laughs> and then we jump way up here to 1999. This is one of my favorite ones. Michael Collager, New Zealand, informs the world that Al Gore controls a giant computer. The computer is the Antichrist. On 1225 of this year, the Antichrist computer will cause a nuclear war between Europe, the U.S., and Israel. I missed that one in my rapture report. That's one of the most that interesting ones. That would have been on Christmas, ones. right? Okay. Yes. And then uh, Jack Van Impey has written... The Antichrist will enslave and control the Earth's billions through a sophisticated computer fashioned in his likeness. And I, there's a whole list of people accused as for Antichrist Satan in here. Satan looks like a computer? They're saying <laughs> Satan is a computer. Oh, okay. man. And um, there's, there's been a lot of ant people accused for Antichrist, just about all the popes. The, pa <laughs> the papacy as an institution, Henry Kissinger, 
the Soviet Union as, as, a, as an organization, Napoleon, Visa, John Kennedy, Jimmy Carter, the World Bank, Saddam Hussein, Mikhail Gorbachev has been accused as the anti Right, there, because of the a, mark of the beast on his head. There is a, <laughs> right. there is a guy on another cable access show yes. that runs that thing with Mikhail Gorbachev, Gorbachev being the anti That's how I first found that out. I, uh, that's yeah. amazing. Wow. Sun Myung Moon, Mussolini, J.C. Penny. I'm going to have to see <laughs> the story behind it. Apparently someone said Pat Robertson was the Antichrist. That's, yeah. that's neat. <laughs> that's New Age religion, and of course, Hitler, Stalin, and Ronald Reagan. Right, because yeah. Ronald Reagan added up to 666. Ronald yeah. Wilson Reagan. So the Antichrist... R-O-N-A-L-D-W-I-L-S-O-N-R-E-A-G-A-N. That's how they got it. Oh, that's <laughs> clever. Well, I have six letters in my first name and six letters in my last name. Yeah. There's only three in my, my middle name, so my uh, 636? I've got six. Uh. <laughs> what is that? Oh, well. Here's a really old one. In the year 591, wow. Jesus Christ, living in France, gathers followers for the end until he is chopped up by the order of the local bishop. And then uh, we have more recent, 1656. In 5001, Christopher Columbus declares himself the Messiah, calls himself Tefkak, and says the end will come in 1656. He loses his money, almost drowns, and is considered a grumpy old crackpot by his neighbors. <laughs> That's the Christopher Columbus that discovered America? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> grumpy old crackpot. Yeah, not many, people, not many people know about that. No, I'd never it known. was Yeah, it was his preaching to the, when he settled some, to the natives of some of these places. Man. October 10th, 1998... This is the date Monte Kim Miller, leader of Concerned Christians, predicted Denver, Colorado will be wiped off the map. Right. When it doesn't happen, the group moves to Jerusalem to jumpstart Armageddon. So, yeah, we right. know Right, and we then they got kicked that. out by the, the we Jewish know about security that. forces. Let me jump ahead. Do we want to stop and just for a moment yeah. uh, express our, our uh, dumbfounded amazement at the spectacle of doves being released oh, in the middle of the yes. night in Jerusalem to celebrate the year 2000? while fireworks are going off. <laughs> Those of you seeing this tape later when, you know, to some time has passed, remember back to the, the news footage of this, because that was just kooky. I, I started my VCR because I had the foresight to see that was going to happen. <laughs> doves, doves a, re, a common symbol of Christianity, being blown up by fireworks. Maybe that's supposed to be some kind of. Maybe there's that a. That was prophecy. a Chinese thing. A Chinese invented fireworks and they shot at the oh, doves. Oh yes, there it is. they predicted that China. There were there, there were there how many was million? There a million? Were there a million or so fireworks? A million fireworks <laughs> and two thousand doves. They were outnumbered. That's it. They got <laughs> blown away. Well, all oh, those just, dead doves went straight to heaven. So they were worry. dive bombing. They were flying into walls. They were flying into each other, and many of them they, were hitting the camera uh, on yeah. CNN. And, Amazing. Have you heard anything from the animal rights groups that are, would be, do you think they'd be screaming about this? I they have heard that there, were out, that there were protests. Yeah. They, they said that, they mentioned all this stuff before and as it was going on, but I haven't heard a thing about it after the event. Oh, it's going to be forgotten, which yeah. is why this tape is so important to the future of humanity. That's just so silly. I don't want people to forget. <laughs> I don't want people to forget that. No, I th and in fact, I think that's an important point. The reason why people still get away with making, making these crazy predictions and having them not come true, and still having a reputation, except for poor Christopher Columbus, <laughs> uh, is that, you know, people just do not draw a hard line against this kind of kookiness. Mm -hmm. We really oughtn't to be tolerating lunatics going around frightening huge numbers of people by making these crazy claims. When people make these cl crazy claims, they should be laughed off the street. Well, and they are by us. It's they are by us. That's not yeah. enough. You know, it's, there's not enough atheists. It's easy yeah. to dupe people, though, too, because they they just they go for it. Like, remember when uh, Orson Welles put on that radio program? Yeah. The the world? And he wasn't even trying to confuse people. He, I had, yeah. he had a disclaimer at the front of the program saying it was a radio program, and it started at panic. People were running for the hills, thinking the little big aliens from Mars were coming to get them. And over a lot a of people program. want this to happen. They do. Yeah. They do. It's I bizarre. I talk to people cause... all the time. You call them fatalists. They have this idea, well, you know, eventually one day I want to die. Why? Uh, I don't get that. Why? If there's a way I can program it to, or, or fix my body or some modern technology comes on where I can live to be three, four hundred years old, I'm going for it. I was very pleased to see that, the, that uh, CNN on the uh, first day of 2000 was 
just jam-packed with interviews with guys talking about these new technologies, many of which have been used to terrify Christians for, for you know, decades, right? Have been, have been uh, picked out, you know, genetic engineering and um, uh, life extension and all these, all these things have been used to, by religious leaders to terrify people. Mm. They're finally on CNN talking about this stuff and saying, well, okay, so it's a new technology and it will give us new capabilities and it'll change some things, but really it's no reason to get all nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a uh, news, local news program ran a show, I think it was Christmas Day, and uh, gene therapy is 10 years off. We're yeah. 10 years from being able to fix things before you're even born. They find out what's wrong with you and correct it, and then you get a healthy child born. Or problems that people have in old age just can, uh, uh, what is it, um, cloning. You might be able to clone your own organs from your own DNA mm -hmm. for replacements of ones that have gone bad. Yep. It, it, it's, there's all kinds of good stuff around it, the corner. It's going to happen. And I think yeah. what pisses Christians off the most about it is that it just highlights what a bad job their God did if mm -hmm. he is supposed to have invented everything, you right. know. Well, they got excuses for that. You know, well, you've sinned and fallen short, so now you're cursed with all these maladies that, you know. Well, I know someone personally. I told them because they're severely against it because it's plain God. Yeah. And as you said, somebody has to do it. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. God's Nobody else doing is doing it. it. Why not us? If and God's uh, going to fall down on his job, somebody's got to do it. I tried to give her the best example I could. I said, what if you knew your own child was going to be born without arms or legs and you could, you know, turn on a few genes to keep that from happening? And, and she said, no, no way. I would not do that. God, well, then, it's it's then against God's will. Anybody who would say something like that is just plain, and, and it's probably not true, given the actual situation they jump right. into gene therapy. Yeah. In it's it's, it's that, real easy right. to say that when you're just yeah. asked. That's right. But. And yet, when we were talking about cloning, I gave an example of saying, well, what if you could clone more animals or, and, and plants that are healthier, and uh, we could get you know many times as, as crops as we get now to being able to feed the poor in countries where they can't reach the food. And she said, right. oh, well, as long as it's for the purpose of good, we'll use it. Yet not well, helping your it's own not child. For, for, it's not for good to, to, to fix your own child's maladies? No. Wow. I mean, clearly people don't really well, think much about this. It's, it's, so it's, important, it it's important to keep in mind that you know, these upcoming technologies are not the only things that have been used to terrify people into, into religious belief. Um, I mean, when, when heart surgery started... Heart surgery was considered evil. Oh, Heart really? transplants were considered right. evil. Mm. Um, go back a little further, blood transfusions were considered evil. Yep. Surgery was considered evil. Uh, understanding anatomy was considered evil. You know, you had Da Vinci oh, yeah. go going into secret with other, with other students of medicine and cutting up corpses so they could figure out how the heck these bodies of ours worked. And that was against the law. Because of organized religion. Because of religion. organized religion saying, you know, oh, you shouldn't know that. There's, of course, you know, of course there is the, what I call the ickiness factor, right? Cutting up dead bodies is icky. Yeah. Right? But that does not mean that there isn't knowledge there that we have some, you know, that it, it makes sense for us to try to acquire. It means you don't want to cut up dead bodies for no good reason. So... And don't forget there's things like like rock and roll was evil. You know? Rock and roll yeah, was evil. That Christian rock. And now there's Christian rock. Right. There's Christian <laughs> gangster rap. I was looking up. <laughs> oh, but do you no. have that? Do you have that picture? You had a you had a printout. Oh, God's gangsters. Yeah, show yeah, us God's um, gangsters. I want to tell you some of the song titles on. I was look. I was in a in a store, CD store, and I saw the Christian music section, and I happened to spot. Yeah. These uh, you know people waving guns around on the covers of albums, and I thought, gee, someone put something in the Christian section as a joke. You know, like, uh, you got spiritual warfare, God's gangsters. You got a whole still. Okay, sorry. And there it is. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> anyway. Jesus. <laughs> now, and the album titles were hilarious because they go back and forth from violence to godliness. They have, they have like, track one, Jesus is Lord. Track two, I ain't no bitch. Track three... <laughs> Prayer will bring you, you know, <laughs> prayer will provide, prayer track will provide four, cap that bitch. ass. And it just goes <laughs> back, it goes back and forth. They're trying to combine, they're hilarious. And there's a, and there's a website, uh, no, I probably can't give it out here. Spiritual but, warfare. Yeah, spiritual that's what warfare. Need, more warfare. And uh, on cable access, annually, there's some Christian gangster rap thing where there's kids and their families are watching, they're, they're rapping about how Jesus got my back with the gap and, full attack and you know the rhyming 
violent Christianity. Right. But anyway, uh, that's fun. That's always fun. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. You know, it, Christianity is supposedly about hope. Show the so you get the the the, the prophecy uh, doomsday yeah, center. Yeah, it says okay. it says the. Let's zoom in on the cover of this this little treasure here. It's one of the best things. It says Revelation speaks hope. And what do we have? We have dragons, three-headed cheetahs with four wings, li winged lions, bears with evil eyes and sticks in their mouth. And yeah, and inside we have There's hope. It says hope for hope tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow. People and the in first flames. Thing is, and, you know, and, and this boy, prophecy speaks hope, and it shows the Earth getting hit by an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all hoping for that. <laughs> and uh, how to survive the year 2000. Yeah. I missed that. Which is, which is, of course, just uh, b whipping up uh, a furor about the year 2000 being some kind of terrible catastrophe, which it wasn't. But it, but he, they're saying it's a message of hope while simultaneously making up all this nonsense about how the year 2000 is going to be a disaster. I, I got, I got to point this out though. You open it up, and in big letters it says, "Asteroid impact May 7th, 7:15." <laughs> <laughs> and and that and I thought whoa and then I realized oh that's when the lecture is <laughs> and, and you should see they have a whole lecture series May seventh asteroid impact May 9th, how to survive the year two thousand May tenth a cosmic hero called Christ May sixteenth when the world turns upside down uh, May twentieth hellfire in Abraham's bosom May twenty first Antichrist who is it May twenty and uh, Christ and Antichrist on stage after 2,300 days. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is this? These are all lectures and events. May 30th, how you can add 7 to 20 years to your life. Whoa, now, whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> if the year, when did this come out? I wish I saw this. This was around, this was around May. I wish I had gone to these, but I, it, I, I was May scared. of 1999, and it's about the year 2000 being the apocalypse and how to add 7 to 20 right. years to your life. All right, I'm yeah. not going to pretend to understand. I missed, I missed the thing. And then here, here it says, how to have more cash fast. <laughs> well, you would need it fast, wouldn't you? <laughs> Looting. When, when Armageddon comes, let's loot. Oh, no. And, uh, there, and then the final lecture is called, Remember Lot's Wife? Yeah, we, we remember what happens to Lot's Wife. God turned her into a pillar of salt. Yeah. I wonder what that was yeah. about. Well, looking back at <laughs> And this, home, this, she was this inspired me to read Revelations, because I thought, dragons, three-headed cheetahs with wings, that's not in the Bible, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and they got it wrong. The, the cheetah should have six wings, yeah. so should the lion. The dragon should have seven heads, not one. And, and there's a dove. I, I don't see it getting hit by fireworks. And what's fireworks. the big statue guy? You weren't able to figure that the out, The big right? statue guy, I'm not, it's supposed to symbolize Apollo, I think, because of the asteroid impact. But Apollo isn't in the Bible. That's, that's <laughs> Roman mythology. They're confused there. Yeah. And, uh, wow. Should I... I I got so much here because I do I do the future ones. Jump to the jump to the upcoming ones. Okay, wait. Let me just get to the the best of the best. There's All right. like maybe five. All right. Of the past ones, like Let's... 1947. Yeah. John Below Newborg, who invented his own religion, a hospe, and his own Bible, the Cosman Bible, predicted in 1889 that Christianity would destroy the world in 1947. That's interesting. It almost did. It's called World War yeah. II. In uh, 1976, Jack Van Impey had written the Soviet flag would fly over Independence Hall in Philadelphia by 1976. He later says he really meant to say 2000. <laughs> but either way you go. And I was looking at Jack Van Impey's website and tons of books titled How We Know Jesus Will Return by the Year 2000 and... Um, um, uh, there's one Y2K bug and people, it shows, people, it shows people. nuclear explosions in New York City. I think they were off a bit there. Uh, here, here's one. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a word in Christianity, or a phrase in Christianity, for people who make predictions that don't come true. It's called false, false prophet. prophet. And what about <laughs> All Jesus? these people, Jack Van Impey, false prophet. Stop paying attention to that idiot. Well, but Jesus, too. He was wrong about Jesus, his prediction. Yeah, false, false prophet. prophet. He said he'd be back before some of the people listening to his voice died. No, I'm sorry. False prophet. Do you remember these false prophets in 1998, though? 
Ho Min Shin, Shin Heng Min, leaders of God's Salvation Church, a Taiwanese Christian Buddhist cult in Garland, Texas, yeah! awaits for a message from God to be broadcast on Dallas Channel 18 at precisely 10 a.m. <laughs> and nothing. And they were interviewing people who were tuning in and were disappointed. There were actually people tuning in. I wish we had gotten that time slot. Yeah. That would have been fun. <laughs> right? They kind of a message uh. from us. <laughs> <laughs> now, it'd be I think it's worth mentioning Jerry Falwell, because he's quite Please popular. Do. Uh, Jerry Falwell, too prudent to set a definite date, says, an alliance of the Muslim nations led by Iran and the Muslim republics from the former Soviet Union with a total of 200 million soldiers will start a nuclear war causing Armageddon. Demons from the bottomless pit will roam Earth to torment unbelievers. Jerry Falwell believes, honestly, literally believes, that there is a hell with physical demons, whatever, you know, scaly winged things that are like hiding amongst us and making bad stuff right, happen. Today, now, the guy's an idiot. Yeah. yeah, we have this on tape. He thinks now every day these demons are doing these yep. things. Oh, and now here's a we had, In fact, we had tape of him actually saying that, so we're not making this up, folks. Right. Yeah. There's a, here's a future date. Yeah, here we go. And uh, actually, it starts out with 2000, though. Hal Lindsey, author of Planet Earth 2000, says this is it, but if it isn't, he really means to say 2048. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this no. is the same Hal Lindsey that first said 1988. Yeah. False prophet. Stop listening to that moron. Stop buying his books. He's an idiot. All he's doing is he's making money by whipping people into a paranoid frenzy. Stop listening to these morons. Another common thing, that there's lots of people out there willing to cash in on these people's fears. Now, normally this is a call-in show, and we've had people call in and tell us this one. The year 2000 would be the end, because when you divide 2000 by 3, what you do you get? 666.666. I brought up uh, uh, last year that uh, 1999, if you turn it upside down, it's got three sixes in it. Right. Ooh, right? Yeah. And, and 2000, you divide it by... by what? Three. By three. By three. Yeah, and you get an infinite number of It sixes. doesn't mean anything when people do that, folks. I mean, a lot of these, these doomsayers whoop up these, their, their uh, predictions by coming up with this goofy, uh, this goofy numerological stuff. It's just number games. You've heard of word games, right? Scrabble, or scrambling letters to make, anagram, uh, make anagrams, or... Mm. You know, all, all these other things, it, you can do the same thing with numbers, and they do. Unfortunately, when you do it with letters, people think that it's, you know, haha, goofy, cute letter and word games. When people do it with numbers, for some reason, people huh. take it seriously. It's not yeah. any more serious. So with the Bible code, they're doing it with letters, yeah. too. Bible oh, code! Which brings oh, us, there you go. Which brings and us <laughs> to Michael Drosnin. Aha! And the Bible code has written that his computer helped him figure out World War III will begin now, or maybe 2006. <laughs> What do you mean, or maybe? Yeah. I thought that according to the Bible code, the future was absolutely predicted right. with certainty. Baseball and also scores, with nuclear war, in the Bible. They, he announced that a nuclear war might happen, it also might not happen. He said that. And that's well, not duh. a prediction, yeah. that's of not course, at all. Yeah. Anything either might or might not happen. <laughs> oh, and uh, here's something that should be happening now, I think. Stefano Gabi, insurance salesman turned Roman Catholic priest, Chats with the Virgin Mary in Fatima, Portugal in 1972. Oh, yeah. And starts the Marian movement of priests. Right. Book Papel vi oh, Fatima. Books, thing. Papel Fatima. visits Fatima. press coverage, and millions of dollars, which might have been wasted on the poor and sick, roll into the Vatican treasury. Mary tells him the world will end in 2000 or 2001, or is it 2002? He's vague, but it's darn soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now it all ah, here's, way, here's a future one, way in the future. Max Toth, pyramidologist, by measuring the pyramids, oh. won't have to worry about angry followers when this end date also doesn't happen, because it's the year 2979. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe he won't take those life extension pills when they come out. I got... Uh... I got some more stuff I want to do. You, okay. Do you have I, some we, important we things a, to wrap up what you're doing? Well, let's let's take a break. There's like ten more here I want to mention, but there, there's. I just oh, wanted so to many. point out that um, that religious leaders are not the only people who make stupid predictions for the for end the end times that or or about things that are going to happen in the future in general that don't come true. They're not the only it's only idiots out there. Psychics 
are way <laughs> up near the top of the list for, uh, for idiotic future predictions. The world's top psychics got it wrong for most of the last decade, from Madonna giving birth to quintuplets to John F. Kennedy Jr. flying a space shuttle mission with astronaut John Glenn. Gene Emery, a science writer for the U.S. publication Skeptical Inquirer, a magazine for science and reason, has been following the forecasts of top psychic psychics for over the last two decades. In 1999, he notes, psychics failed to predict deadly earthquakes in Turkey and Taiwan, the nuclear accident in Japan, or the death of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, and her sister Lauren Bissett in an airplane crash into the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, psychics had stated the Kennedys would have a successful year. Hmm. India's Sanjeev Mishra, who the tabloid Sun calls one of the ten greatest psychics on Earth, predicted last year that John F. Kennedy Jr. would fly a space shuttle mission with John Glenn as his co-pilot in August of this year, which turned out to be the month that his plane crashed. Mm. Bassett Kennedy would give birth to healthy twins, according to Anthony Carr, the, uh, billed as the world's most documented psychic by the National Enquirer. The more newspapers give publicity to psychics, the more undeserved credibility they receive, Emery says. Every time the media hypes psychics, it encourages consumers to waste large amounts of money calling psychic hotlines. The concern, he said, is that a lot of people are calling the psychic hotlines at $4 a minute, even though evidence suggests that the alleged soothsayers on the other end of the line don't have the visionary capabilities the callers expect. For $4 a minute, you could find a counselor or a psychotherapist or a, even a clergyman or, a, or just a friend who would direct you to resources to help you with your problem, Emery said in a telephone interview. And yet people don't want that because the psychics promise that they have a greater insight than any of those folks. Another problem with the media is that it gives psychics... Uh, Excuse me. Another problem with the publicity the media gives psychics is that it also encourages some police departments to listen to psychics who claim to be able to solve crimes. Not only do psychic detectives waste valuable police resources, the psychics sometimes implicate people who later turn out to be innocent. For this year alone, psychics erroneously predicted <clears throat> a pollution cloud would paralyze New York City, Singer Winona Judd would quit country music to become a woman's wrestler. <laughs> marijuana, marijuana would replace petroleum as the United States' main energy source. The Statue of Liberty would lose her arms in a terrorist blast. Former White House intern Monica Lewinsky would make millions after opening a New York boutique for full-figured women called Monica's Closet. And O.J. Simpson would confess to radio host Howard Stern on the air that he did indeed kill his ex-wife, Nicole Brown. Sometimes, Emery notes, psychics do get lucky, but it's rare considering how many of them are making predictions. For example, one psychic predicted in 1992 that Florida would have its worst hurricane in history. That prediction did turn out to be correct. However, the psychic had also forecast that an earthquake, earthquake would follow shortly afterwards, which never happened. Emery also noted that many psychic predictions are vague, making, clairvoyant, uh, make, making clairvoyance seem more accurate than they really are. One psychic, Sylvia Brown, predicted in 1999 that the Pope would become ill and die. This means she can claim success if the Pope suffers any anything from a head cold to a fatal heart attack, said Emery, adding Brown's predictions also in, included cures for breast cancer and sudden infant death syndrome. During the 1990s, psychic for, psychics foretold that in this decade, scientists would discover an anti-aging drug that would stretch normal lifespans to 150 years. That may well happen, but it didn't happen in the 90s. That earthquakes would turn San Diego and Los Angeles into islands. That the Super Bowl would be canceled because so many players were suspended for drug use. And the coaches couldn't field teams. And that Madonna would give birth to quintuplets. What surprises Emery is that mo more psychics didn't exploit believers this year with Y2K predictions. Well, I guess the religious people already had that, yeah, that line well, of predictions sewed up. We got Christianity. We got psychics. What about UFO nuts? UFO oh, nuts! Let's yeah. love the UFO nuts. We love the UFO nuts. Okay. <laughs> See, in uh, July 1999, God's Salvation Church of Garland, Texas predicts World War III will start now, but the faithful will be rescued by spaceships. Uh-huh. 
1993 to 1997, Augusta Media predicts that during this period, Jesus, an extraterrestrial, will evacuate the earth so it can be tidied up. Then he'll, put a, <laughs> then he'll put us all back. Jesus, the maid, so not a carpenter. Chairs on the table, we'll vacuum the rug, and put the chairs back down. And, uh, can we hang on a big, big do not disturb sign? Yeah. <laughs> Hanging on the, the doorknob of the earth? And uh, this is a fun one. Um, 7 a.m. July 5th, 1998. Bob Elias Jr. Dobbs, high epopped and living avatar of Slack, the saint of sales of the Church of the Subgenius, one of my favorite churches. Which is, of course, it's entirely tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, it's, it's, it's but, pretty ambiguous. But, but, it, but it's amusing anyway. But they proclaim that er the Earthmen from planet X will arrive this day to take the faithful up to sp spaceships filled with sex goddesses <laughs> and destroy the rest of the population. When it doesn't happen, Bob says he had the date upside down. It would really happen in 8,661. <laughs> now, this, now this, of course, it's very ambiguous. This is probably a joke, but it's, it's so damn funny. I just had to mention it. Actually, there's only three more on okay. here. And Go this ahead. Is, we this got, is we back, got five more minutes. This is back to Jesus stuff. Uh, September 1988, Edgar C. Wessonant, Former NASA engineer says his book, 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Be in 1988, <laughs> that Christ will rapture true believers at this time. He changes it to January 1989, then September 1989, then he gives up on raptured. 1993, <laughs> Benny Hinn from the Assemblies of God had proclaimed this as the year of the rapture. He also said by 1995, his loving God would destroy all homosexuals. November 11th, 1993, um, now this is from the Weekly World News, you know, who, uh, who well, listens to that. Oh, well, don't count but no, that. They, but, well, they make stuff up. But what's funny, though, is, is they're mistaken here, because the article written by a supposedly top scientists predicting the Earth's <laughs> destruction by an asteroid M167. Now what's funny about this is it only goes up to M110. There There's are, no such thing. <laughs> so that, that is they just got, a mistake I thought it was found They got 57 too many asteroids. Yeah. October 23rd, 1996. James Usher, Irish Archbishop in the Aha. 15th century, had proclaimed this would be the big day. And I suspect that's the same Usher who calculated the age, age of the, of the earth, earth being about 6,000 years right, old. Right, saying that it was, it was begun in the war, uh, year 4004 B.C. Right, so this would be exactly 6,000 years. Nine in the morning on a Saturday. 1996. Yeah, nine in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> he had it down to the hour. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that these, that these people can continue to make money on this nonsense. So, and, they, and, they, and they make money on these horrifying predictions of terrible catastrophes, and then have the, have the, have the audacity to claim that they're spreading a hopeful message. I'll give you a hopeful message, folks. The world's not going to end. There will probably be good things happening and bad things happening, and, and there could be some really bad things happening. But the world's not going to end anytime soon. Go live your lives. Enjoy life. Don't give your money to people who are just trying to scare you into getting cash out of your pocket. And, it's all a bunch of nonsense. And another piece of good news, don't whine to us that when your life ends, there's no heaven because there's no hell. That. Right. That's a piece of good news there. If, yeah, if, if Christianity and the idea of, of, of an afterlife was really about providing a hopeful message, they wouldn't have a hell. The hopeful message could, would be, well, you get to go to heaven when you die. If that was just true for everybody, that would be a, a hopeful message. It would be wrong, but it would at least be hopeful. It's not about that. The heaven and hell thing is about scaring people with hell so that well, that's the stick, and the carrot is heaven, and it's all about getting people to come in, sit down in pews, and fork over their dough. That's what it's about. Um, the sad thing is they're going to use this now. Since the predictions didn't happen in 1999, they're just going to drag it on for another. They year. will, but I, but you know, like I said on the show before, I'm I'm glad about this yeah. because now we have like all a many year. year long, several year long period. We had all of last year to talk about right. this. It's, it's, the longer they drag it on, the more we can pound them on the stupidity of these predictions. I'll Probably. tell you, yeah, have you heard the good news about Jesus? Which was it? The good news was it's just a story. It was there made up. Go. It's not true. <laughs> you haven't got a soul, so you don't have to worry about it being tortured forever in hell. What you've got is you've got your existence here on earth. And you can, and, and 
you know, if you want it to be a nice existence, then you've got the capability, limited and human as it may be, you've got the capability to make an effort to improve your life. And that's what the future ought to be about. There's a quote from Gene Roddenberry. I can't remember what it is now, but I'll get it later. Okay. That, that really does sum up that. that we Can you paraphrase? Basically, we, the human is a remarkable race, and we have great potential, and we need to work on that. Yeah. And we have, we have to start, think, quit thinking about this doom and gloom and, and all this other stuff. Put that stuff behind us and get on with making our lives worth living and making it better for the generations that come behind us. That's and right. These, these are, these are, this is hope. That's hope. When you that's start hope. working towards a better future, that's hope. I mean, we had uh, John Coons, who is uh, one of the co-chairs of our group, is a uh, grade school teacher. And he's talking about a, a significant portion of the children in his classes yeah. believe that they will never live to see adulthood because the end of the world is going to come. How dare anybody call that a hopeful message? No, that's just so I met someone on New Year's who was telling me all about how she used to believe that yeah. she was you know, raised in the, I think, I can't remember really what denomination mind. exactly, but she seriously believed she wasn't going to, oh, sorry, okay, wrong camera. <laughs> she, I wasn't looking at any camera, I was trying, but. And she seriously believed that she was, was not going to live to be 25, which she is now. And she was telling me all about how she just kind of let her life fall apart. She was doing drugs and well, what In my day, we had the Cold War, and we were all going to get blown up by a nuclear explosion. And uh, um, that hasn't happened, and now we don't have a Cold War anymore. So now we've, we've substituted that fear-mongering for, for um, the new fear-mongering of this rapture That's apocalypse right. stuff. And so we need to get rid of this, just abandon this stupidity and get on with, with life. You know, you're born in the beginning, you die at the end, it's that part in the middle called life. That's what we need to work on. That's right. And I think we need to close our show up now. Yep. Yeah, it good. looks like it looks like we're at the end of the uh, of the hour that we had allotted. Yep. And if we went a little over, well, you can just edit out some yeah, stupid but... things I said. <laughs> and uh, thanks yeah. for watching. Yep. Yeah, Enjoy the future. Co-host. Here it yeah, is. That's our crew. We are the atheist community of Austin. I'd like to thank all the people in the crew for their uh, efforts above and beyond the call of duty here, putting in extra time so we could put this uh, bonus tape together. There you go. That's us. Bye-bye, folks. Look to the future. Look to the future. Make it good. That was fun. You should do some more of these. <laughs> but I, don't worry, I won't have that many things when we're on the live show. I was no, just, okay. no, I was just. I did. I pushed okay. it along we can a little bit. Along over the time on a tape. When I thought that we were running out. Down to an hour to yeah, I'm glad you had a chance to get a, a lot more of those in there. <laughs> that I tough? know. Yeah. It's, it's very tough. You have to be right on that thing. You look kind of bleary eyed. Yes, it will bug your eyes uh, yeah. out. Oh, okay. I was confused. Okay. We have what? What left? I glitched out. A minute left on the tape? Yeah, the word. What? And I got the credits. Yeah. I had the credits. Oh. But we got it all. The credits came off. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it happens to me too. You, yeah. you, it's, it's one of those things that after you've done it about for a year or so, you'll still screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To be a good episode. I think it did. I mean, it has do. a real strong theme. And yes. And it does. We had plenty of stuff to say. And we weren't distracted by nutcases. Nutcases. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all for Smash this. I think maybe we could, sheep, we could even talk about maybe uh, doing some other from a Christian shop. I didn't get that one. I just thought it was funny. We could talk about what? No, I think we should talk about uh, planning some other things. Because we have, I saw a like Christian this, the day of the lecture, and we don't really necessarily have to Sometimes you have to believe before you come into a tape. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I know. So to, but we, we mostly. We I think we, if we were going to do that, we should pick a different day. I mean, if we, I don't want to rely. I don't want to not have a live show if we can have a live show. Well, it's, 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 it's so we can get another day. <laughs> well, let's try to get a, let's get a list. Let's pick a day. Okay. Well, let's get some let's get some material first. Let me go order. Day's easy. We 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 will be able to come up with with material. Right. We need to pick a day so we can start putting together a list of volunteers yeah, yeah, yeah. by telling them a specific day. When we know we will have a crew on a certain day, right. then we can reserve the studio and we'll come up with a theme. Right. Okay, can you bring those like uh, those microphone boxes over here? I'd like to do something along the lines of... Uh, uh,
what we were talking about, some of that future stuff. Okay. Where we yeah, actually get into some of the things. Day, but I am glad you brought that up because we could, it was then, you know, a change in attitudes. Talking about a change in attitudes about the future.